Greetings and welcome to Education in Focus, powered by Chalkboard News. I'm Dan McCaleb, Vice President of News and Content at the Franklin News Foundation, publisher of ChalkboardNews.com. Chalkboard is a news website dedicated to issues related to K-12 education. Joining me again today is Chalkboard's K-12 editor, Brendan Clary. How are you, Brendan? I'm doing well, Dan. How about you? I am doing well, thank you. We are recording this on Monday, January 29th. Brennan, we've written a lot at ChalkboardNews.com about the ongoing battle over what types of books are appropriate for K-12 through students in school libraries. We're talking like graphic books that show how to perform various sexual acts, books that promote critical race theory, things like that. This really has become a partisan issue, with the Republicans arguing those types of books are inappropriate for younger students in particular and don't belong in school libraries and Democrats claiming that that point of view is censorship and accusing Republicans of trying to ban books. Well, Oklahoma superintendent of schools, uh, he doubled down on the conservative side of the argument when he appointed Libs of TikTok creator Haya Rachik to the department's Library Media Advisory Committee. First, Brennan, for our listeners who are unfamiliar with Libs of TikTok and its founder, if you could just briefly explain who she is and what she advocates. Yeah, Chaya Rachik. She is the uh, woman who's behind the Twitter account Libs of TikTok. I don't know if she's on Instagram or something else too, but X, uh, formerly Twitter, that's where the account has, I think, the most traction. It's called Libs of TikTok. And basically, um, I think she got started by posting videos of progressives on TikTok and, and you know, sort of mocking them on X or Twitter back when it was Twitter. And so basically saying, you know, this is what they're promoting. This is who they're pushing. And she's posted a lot of stuff that is about teachers, about people posting sort of ideologically driven messages, maybe geared towards students, maybe geared toward other things. So that's been her MO essentially is, is identifying and showing, you know, this school has this book in its library. And it's one that's been flagged, you know, across the country by Republicans, as you mentioned, who are saying that this is inappropriate for, for schools and inappropriate for students and sort of kind of these kinds of things at the heart of the culture war, right? So, but that account, Libs of TikTok, has been, you know, vociferous about this is problematic. And th- these are the schools where it's at. And in some cases, you know, causing controversy, like it's, it's a big enough account, you know, if she can post something and like at a Oklahoma school, uh, a number, a, a few years ago, I think maybe, um, maybe last year, if you posted, you know, something about that school and a, a librarian at the school, and then the school obviously bomb threats. And that was at an Oklahoma school. So like, you know, so people can take that and, and run with it. And so I think that there's been some criticism there, of some of the tactics. She's a resident of New York State, as I understand. Is that correct? That is correct. So why is Oklahoma superintendent, Ryan Walters is his name, why did he appoint her to the Oklahoma's uh, advisory board for libraries that will govern, you know, what kinds of books are there? Yeah, I think I think it's a statement on his position about these kind of sort of ideological questions, right? About like what should be allowed in libraries. So I think that that that's sort of the biggest thing. I think that that signals and, and like from the statement that he offered that Rachel would work against indoctrination from the radical left. That she's on the front lines, you know, showing the world exactly what the radical left is all about. So these are statements from Walters, and and he, you know, gave. Chalkboard News statement uh, last week when I wrote this that you've been in a strong working relationship. So, you know, they, they've partnered uh, at some point about these kinds of issues before. Maybe they've had this interaction. And the statement was quite, quite strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not going to lie to you, Brennan. Hire Rachik and I have developed a strong working relationship to rid schools of liberal, woke indoctrinators, union smut peddlers, and Epstein Island advocates. The statement to you, yeah, Chalkboard News, said. and that Oklahoma is ground zero to take back our schools from the radical leftists. I'm proud to have her as a fierce defender of our conservative values. So I think that that is, you know, pretty much a unfiltered like this is what we're trying to do here, and it, and it's like we have the tools and we have the ability to appoint her, and we're going to do it, and we're going to try to do that. And I actually, you know, I was looking into this as well. She spoke to the committee. It was like on Zoom uh, at a committee meeting. I believe last week as well, and was saying, you know, we're going to, we're going to remove this kind of content from schools and, you know, that she was very excited to be there. But again, like she was kind of tele telecommuting in basically she was on a video that had been pre-recorded because she doesn't live in the state. She lives in New York. And so she's, she's received some criticism from that from lawmakers in the state. Uh, You know, she doesn't, live there. She's not technically, uh, you could argue she's not representative of the people of Oklahoma. She's not an Oklahoman. So like, how do you sort of reconcile that with the spirit of the committee when there are people there too, who, you know, who are 
uh, qualified and who live in the state and are, you know, former librarians or, you know, so there are those kind of questions, right? And that is somebody like a critic, you know, why would he appoint somebody there? It's, you know, what are her qualifications? So th- then it gets into the bigger question of, you know, how, how do you do that content moderation? But I think that there are some some valid questions to raise about, you know, does this fulfill the spirit of sort of the regulation or, or the policy to, to create these kind of committees? Well, why don't you, Brendan, can you speak to this without getting graphic, without getting too specific? She and Oklahoma's school superintendent apparently believe that this controversial content in these books don't belong in schools. Can you you would describe one of the books or two that has been at the center of, you know, these debates. One of the big ones that you see kind of popping up is called Gender Queer, a memoir. And that, that one's popped up quite a bit because it is a illustrated book. And so, you know, there are, there's some content there about uh, the author's, you know, coming of age and wrestling with their gender identity and some of these questions about that and, and sort of going through their life and trying to figure out you know, some of that stuff. But then related to that, you know, there's some uh, encounters or fantasies that are depicted. And so that those drawings, you know, you could you could say like, okay, that is not what we want our students to see. And, you know, I think that you could also make the argument like, well, this is important because, you know, you want people who, uh, you know, sexual minority youth, you know, LGBTQ plus advocates say, you know, it's important that we have literature in our school libraries that reflects uh, the identities of, of students who are LGBTQ+. And so I think that that's, that's sort of, you know, the tension there. But yeah, I mean, there's some of these do have these graphic novels are in school libraries. And, and sometimes it's, you know, not elementary school, it's middle school or high school. But then it's still the question of like, do we want these at all? And is removing them, you know, actually banning them? And so that that's sort of the question is, you know, if you're saying like, okay, this is a state funded library and we're not like saying you can't buy it at home, you know, you, your parents can buy it for you. You can buy it, you know, at a, you know, a private bookshop, you know, is it really book banning? And so that's the response raised by critics of these kinds of books is like, we're not banning it, but we're trying to trying to remove it from publicly funded libraries. On the other side, you know, you, you have advocates saying like, well, you know, we should be respectful to people who are, you know, sexual minority youth. And so that's, yeah, without trying to get too graphic there, there are some of these kind of books there that have that content. Well, it will be interesting to see how this works out in the uh, long term. After she gets seated, apparently starts communicating with other board members, contributes to making decisions. But we are out of time, uh, Brennan. Listeners can keep up with this story and all stories related to K-12 through education at chalkboardnews.com. For Brennan Clary, I'm Dan McCaleb. Please subscribe. Thank you for listening. Learn from creative experts. At Skillshare, classes are taught by industry leaders excited to share their tools, techniques, and professional journeys with you. Follow the link in our show description to join Skillshare today and get one month free.